So just a quick video talking about scaling and how you should think about scaling your workout. So for example, we did schmalls today, and it's a workout that includes handstand press-ups. Now when people see handstand press-ups, their first thing is, well, I want to be, make sure I'm upside down, and I want to make sure I'm doing something that looks like a handstand press-up. So you'll see people, obviously a handstand press-up, I'm going to turn around here, is um, from the floor and in a handstand. So apologies, I've got my mic on here, so if the sound cuts off a little bit, I apologize, but we're going to go up from here. Into that now, a full press-up is head to the floor. So you see people sometimes put an ab mat here and then go through their handstand press-up with an ab mat there. Okay, so they've got a slightly shorter range of motion in an action in a regular handstand push-up. Now it really depends on whether you're trying to match the appearance of the, work, of the movement or the training intent of the workout. Sometimes, now and again, you might want to practice doing the kip version of the handstand press-up and maybe a slightly smaller version of the handstand press-up. But if that's all you do when it's handstand press on the workout, you're going to struggle to improve enough of your shoulder strength through a full range of motion to be able to do a proper handstand push-up. A better option from trying to do that most of the time is to do either some variation of a press-up so whether that's just a, a full press up from the floor or um, a pike handstand press up or a shoulder press, okay, with a barbell. Push press is a good one, good example to do because a push press, you're going to get that lower body kip motion using your hips to full extension and then you're going to press that bar overhead and work the shoulders rather than sort of in a handstand press up. Obviously, I know that the range is, is basically from here. This one, you're going to work it from a full range of motion here, but with that little push press, it's probably more like the main, main power is coming from about here. That's going to work your shoulder strength, and that's going to build your strength up so that in the future, you'll be able to do a handstand press-up. And that will be closer to the training intent of the workout than doing a very small handstand press-up, especially if you're, if you're using more than one ab mat. Now, there's nothing wrong with, with scaling it that way, but just think about what you're choosing for that training intent. And I'm just going to grab a box, actually. And I just want to talk about box push-ups. So if I've got a box here, and we're talking about scaling press-ups, when you're scaling a press-up, because we're going to bring this down from a hands press-up, if you cannot do a press-up from the floor where you get all the way in your range of motion, then you need to do a box press-up. And a box press-up should look like this. So the elbow should be coming down at about a 45 degree angle. Your chest should touch the box. And you should drive up, keeping your body in a straight line. Nice neutral spine from here. If you cannot do that, or if your press-up looks like this, or like this, then you'll be much better lifting that box up higher to a 30 inch position here that makes it easier getting yourself into a slightly more vertical position than what you're just doing and getting it a full range of motion here. Quality over difficulty. I think we can establish that. So I see most people when they're doing press up scaling, there's some kind of phobia about using a box push up, um, especially for guys, but also for girls in that maybe it's like, oh, it's not as hard a workout. It is equally as difficult if you establish that full range of motion and much more beneficial than a press-up. Hopefully the camera will follow me in here, than a press-up in which you go like this. Okay? We want to work for a full range of motion, so we're working those muscle groups that are intended to be trained in that workout. So just think about when you're choosing a movement that you're going to scale to, and that applies to pull-ups as well, I think it's a movement. Make sure you're closely matching the training intent of that movement. If that means something that doesn't necessarily look like the movement you're trying to do, so with the handstand press-up, we're going to be upright, we're going to move in a barbell rather than moving ourselves. 
that's absolutely fine as long as you're matching their intent. And that applies if you've got injuries as well. We can find some, some movements that will match the intent without um, aggravating any injuries you guys are. So really think clearly before you're scaling, especially if you're doing the workout later today as well, then think about your scaling options and you're going to get much more benefit from your training in the long term. Think about the long term rather than the right now and it's going to make a big difference to your training. Thanks, guys.